Okay, uh, let's start. So, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Shaquille. Uh, I will be presenting TCP memory isolation on multi-tenant servers with my colleague uh, Christian. And uh, here by multi-tenant servers, I mean uh, server which are running multiple workloads of different properties, different priorities. For example, bad jobs, latency uh, sensitive jobs. Okay. Right. So we have been working on this project for almost a year, and there have been uh, we have been uh, getting support and help from a lot of uh, colleagues. Uh, some of them are here as well. Yeah. Let me jump next and go over the uh, outline. So first, I'm gonna give a more on the 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 background. What exactly is TCP memory? How it is accounted? and then uh, present the problem with the existing uh, TCP memory accounting and our solution. Next, I will go over there. And then uh, deploying uh, uh, like the challenges in deploying this solution uh, across our whole fleet. And then uh, the remaining more the work in progress and the conclusion. By the way, you, you can ask questions in between as well if you have any. Okay, uh, so what is uh, TCP memory? So in, in simple terms, it's just uh, memory holding the packets in flight. Uh, for example, in, in the TX sense side, it's uh, memory holding the packets until those packets are acknowledged from the other side. On the receive side, it's uh, memory again, holding the packets until the application has consumed uh, uh, that, uh, those packets. So how it is accounted today? So today uh, we have a global counter, TCP underscore memory underscore allocated, uh, which is uh, used to account basically all the TCP memory usage on the system. And you, you can uh, envision that since this is single global counter, definitely there will be, uh, it can it will be hot, it will be uh, contented. So there are caching mechanism in front of it. Actually, recently we switched the caching mechanisms and we are gonna go over uh, why we did that uh, later slides as well. So, yeah. And, and uh, the second part, how this TCP memory usage is being controlled or limited. So there, there's a, a system level uh, uh, TCP underscore mem, which is exposed to the syscall. It is an array of three integers. So whenever the usage goes above TCP mem2, it starts uh, failing, it's a hard limit. If the usage is above TCP mem1, it uh, enters the system into the TCP pressure state and keep it the system under TCP memory, uh, TCP pressure state until the usage falls below the TCP mem0. Now, what exactly I meant by the TCP pressure? So what does the kernel do when the system is under TCP pressure? Uh, so first thing, uh, any socket which might be active at that time when the system is uh, under TCP pressure, its send and receive buffers will get reduced to a very minimal value. On the receive side, uh, packets may get uh, coalesce or they may uh, get dropped preferably out of uh, order packets. And uh, the kernel does wake up the applications, hey, uh, like we are under pressure, you should uh, wake up the application to consume uh, those packets sooner. On the uh, transmit side, we, uh, the kernel may throttle the sender, the thread uh, of the sender to wait until the memory is available, so then it will allow to go and uh, send it. So these are the mechanisms which the kernel does uh, uh, when the system is under TCP pressure. Now, uh, next I'm gonna go, what are the, like, you, you can clearly see uh, here, uh, like these mechanism does not really care who they are impacting. So on a multi ten systems where you have jobs of different priorities, the, the current mechanism basically cause uh, like isolation issues, particularly like since, since this TCP mem is shared, unregulated limit, uh, 
it can like a low priority job can hog uh, the, the memory and start impacting the higher priority jobs. So whenever a system is under TC pressure, any arbitrary socket, irrespective of high priority, low priority, it, its buffer get reduced, its packet get uh, dropped, any sender, irrespective of high priority, low priority uh, job, uh, it may get throttled. So that's the, uh, the first problem. Uh, the second problem is uh, there's disconnect between the uh, system memory and the TCP memory, or, or more specifically, the system memory pressure and the TCP memory pressure. Uh, so giving uh, you example, when, when the system is out of memory and TCP is in the normal range, uh, we will, like the kernel will allow a network burst to come. And uh, because the TCP is in normal, the TCP press, uh, pressure mechanism will only get triggered when the TCP memory is under pressure. So now these network bursts can uh, like, so system is out of memory, there are uh, many uh, reclaimers working. It can steal, it does, it does steal memory and CPU from all these reclaimers and keep the system in this, memory pressure state for long. Uh, since it have access, uh, like these are happened in the software IQ. So they have, uh, they does allocations, many of the, the structures, struct socks, uh, uh, SKBs uh, does allocation with the GFP atomic. They have access to the atomic reserves. They can uh, go and deplete the atomic reserves. And when those atomic uh, allocation failures happen, they may happen for any application. Uh, any sockets of any application. So now to, at the high level, so first and second problem, you can think of the first one was when the system has memory, but the TCP memory was out of, TCP was out of memory. Here it's the system is out of memory, but the TCP has memory. So, so this, connect, uh, this disconnect between the TCP memory and the system memory is kind of uh, causing the issue. So, for, for now, uh, we are gonna talk more about the problem one, the solution for the problem one. The, the, for the problem two, it's, we are still working on the solution. Uh, we will discuss some ideas at the end. Uh, but yeah, let me jump to the solution. Okay, so the solution for the problem one, it, like it's simple uh, at the high level, you can say just removed since this global TCP uh, limit uh, is like unregulated and uh, does not really differentiate, just remove this limit, let it be, uh, be unlimited. Now, it, it can be abused. For that to uh, counter, we have to start charging, start accounting the TCP memory of the jobs against their, uh, like whatever their limits are. And usually we use uh, C groups, memory C groups, to uh, provide isolation between the jobs. So here, what I'm saying is like start charging the jobs for their TCP memory. So previously, uh, no one is actually uh, paying or like being charged for the TCP memory usage. Now, uh, so with uh, with the C groups, you start charging, and the C groups, MemCG limits will be uh, limiting their TCP memory as well. All right. So uh, going a bit more in depth uh, of, the, of the solution. So C group V1 and V2 provides different semantics how to account the TCP memory. Uh, in the V1, TCP memory is accounted separately. Uh, is, is treated as a separate resource. It has its own usage, it has its own limit. Uh, the, the issue here, it's, you, you can see it is kind of influenced with the, at, at the system level, uh, like uh, the existing uh, accounting mechanisms where uh, TC memory is like, like separate from the system memory. Uh, so here, the, the main issue uh, is uh, it adds the complexity to provision another resource across all the provisioning like stack, uh, node controller, uh, the, the job scheduler, and the resource uh, planning, everything. 
And by the way, like for the V1, uh, it is off by default. And I, like my main uh, uh, thing, uh, not assumption, but I think I'm very much uh, convinced that no one is actually using the C, C group V1 uh, TCP accounting because it's very in inefficient. And no one is complaining for the efficiency because networking uh, is kind of very uh, prone to uh, these uh, like charging and counting. So no one is actually using it. So we went with the with the with the C group V2, which is uh, C group V2 basically treats the TCP memory as the memory as any other memory, and uh, it, it aligns with our like high level V2 migration uh, plan. So what we but, but we are still like on the V1. So what we actually did was port the V2 uh, mechanism semantics into our V1 deployment, and uh, like enable the TCP MCG here. Right. So so uh, here just to point out like uh, now. What about the TCP pressure definition of TCP pressure in the MEMS world? It's still work in progress, and we will be uh, doing like some discussion at the end uh, of the talk. Okay, let me. Uh, so that's the high-level overview of the solution uh, for the for the isolation. And next, I think we are gonna go over the challenges uh, while we try to deploy the TCP MCG uh, across our field. Yeah, so like Shaquille mentioned, the idea of basically just removing the global limit and charging TCP memory usage to the MCG is fairly simple. But essentially, we're changing how memory accounting works kind of for the entire fleet. So there's basically a lot of challenges in actually being able to deploy this to all of our machines. And kind of one of the first problems is that we don't really have any historical data on how much TCP memory each job is allocating. And basically, if we're going to start charging jobs for the TCP memory usage, we have to have some way to kind of let them know how much memory they're actually using. And basically, we want users to provision for this memory either by raising their uh, memory limits or something like that. And if they do this incorrectly, it can lead to either ooms or network degradation due to basically the, the job itself entering uh, TCP pressure. And to make things even harder, I guess, like TCP usage itself is generally very spiky. So it's not exactly a simple thing for users to kind of provision for this resource, even if they have like some idea of how much uh, TCP memory they are using. And kind of on the organizational side of things, um, from an infrastructure perspective, rolling this out is a kind of a reliability win and it kind of unblocks some further rollouts. but. From a user perspective, we're essentially just asking them to pay for a resource that they were getting for free before. So basically, there's not a, a ton of motivation from the user perspective to kind of make these changes. And at the same time, like as infrastructure owners, we can't just break user jobs. So we want to basically manage this rollout in a way that we don't end up getting blocked on just a single user, kind of not making necessary changes. Um, to kind of prepare for TCP MCG charging. And finally, I guess this is a, because this is a new feature, there's always gonna be bugs and stuff. So I guess the, the, the goal for us was more like how do we kind of um, find those bugs early and make sure that they don't kind of um, get us into a situation where we're trying to like rule out this change and roll back the change because we found some bug and basically causing a lot of disruption for users. Um, yeah, so as far as how we tackled some of these challenges, for the first um, challenge, basically, how do we kind of know how much TCP memory these jobs are using? We basically implemented a new mode um, in TCP memory accounting. So basically, it was a mode to measure the TCP memory usage associated with the C group without actually charging it towards um, the C group's memory limit. And so it's not, I guess, a perfect measure of what would happen once the charging is enabled because like it doesn't take into account like any job specific reactions or kind of reactions um, getting if the, of the job itself getting into memory pressure or network pressure, but it basically provides a good starting point for us to estimate like how much uh, network memory a job is actually using 
and how much additional kind of resources the job would need to provision once we do start charging them. And yes, yeah, so essentially we deployed this measurement feature and started collecting this usage data and providing it to job owners so they could get kind of a preview of what their usage looked like. Yeah, and then so basically, so once we have this data, then it gets into the problem of how do we actually kind of act on the data. And given the kind of scale of this rollout, the goal for us was to kind of have as little involvement as possible and basically automate the most of the things that we could. So generally, like for jobs that are under provisioned in terms of their memory limit, we tried to push them towards basically existing um, Google kind of load shaping mechanisms that are available to users. And there's kind of, I guess, two main ones that are relevant for the TCP MCG charging. Uh, the first one is basically user space traffic throttling. So this basically allows users that are um, taking like requests and stuff to configure their own application such that it will start dropping requests or kind of load balancing requests to other instances of their job um, when their memory usage gets high. And basically this kind of helps address the spikiness problem of TCP that I mentioned before by basically kind of smoothing out those spikes both in time and across the different instances of uh, user workloads. And the second um, load shaping mechanism is basically dynamic job sizing. So this one basically, instead of having users kind of set their own resource limits, basically the infrastructure itself will monitor the memory usage of a job and adjust the memory usage limits as needed. And basically together, just by enabling these two um, mechanisms, basically the users can kind of have a hands-off approach. They don't have to worry as much about kind of tweaking their limit and stuff. And hopefully everything kind of just works. Um, however, like there are some set of users that basically do their own kind of specific optimizations and stuff. And so these previous load shaping mechanisms aren't necessarily an option for all users. And so for those users, we essentially have to um, work with them to kind of manually change their memory limits if needed. And because it's manual, it's error prone, Basically, like we mentioned before, it's kind of hard to predict exactly what the TCP usage and even what the behavior will be like once um, TCP charging is enabled. And so, um, yeah, basically these are the kind of users that are at risk for causing the entire rollout to kind of have a long um, delay. Yeah, so basically for, to address like those kind of users that have like basically special um, circumstances that require them to kind of basically take a long time in order to de-risk this rollout. Um, we essentially opted to um, implement uh, a fine grain control for enabling and disabling TCP um, MCG charging. And so basically in the kernel, it's implemented as like a, a per C group control. And then we expose it um, to the user through basically a per job config that um, basically the user can set and then it's ultimately ultimately up to the infrastructure to decide like whether or not to accept the, the setting, the user requests. And this fine grain control basically helps us in two different ways. One is kind of opting in. So basically allowing users to manually turn on the TCP MCG charging ahead of us, enabling it fleet wide. Um, this allows jobs to basically experiment in at like a small scale before the actual rollout and hopefully kind of work through those issues, the potential issues that I mentioned before in a, uh, I guess, more controlled environment. And then the second one is allowing users to opt out of the rollout. So basically the idea is that because this entire rollout is very um, disruptive, basically it requires user changes. Like I said before, we don't want to be kind of having to roll this out and then roll back if we see an issue or something. So the idea is that by opting out like specific users that might see an issue, um, we can kind of quickly mitigate the issue and also allow the entire rollout to continue without waiting on those single users. Because essentially, like Shaquille mentioned, the kind of big benefit of this rollout in general is that we're removing the global limit and basically removing the, the chances of the network contention between different users. So kind of like the earlier that we can get that rolled out, the better it is for the fleet as a whole. 
And yeah, so this basically just helps us de-risk the um, deployment and um, make sure that we're not blocked on like a small set of users needing to make uh, invasive changes into their application. Cool. Now I'll hand it back to Shaquille. Okay, uh, so as I was uh, telling before, uh, since we are like changing some fundamental uh, like accounting of the TCP memory, we are gonna like we actually so here I'm gonna showing you we actually exposed or like caused two bugs uh, kernel bugs. Uh, I'm gonna explain those uh, how those happened. So first one was the like some. Some particular workload started seeing unwarranted uh, memcg ohms. Now, since we are charging for TC memory, uh, like normally we can say, okay, uh, this is like oh, you need more memory, just increase the limit. But on further inspection, what we find out that uh, this job, uh, the the memcg usage. And uh, like it's it was running like when uh, we saw this job running on a single machine uh, alone, and it hit the uh, like very high memcg uh, usage. And on closer uh, inspection of the ohm report, we saw okay the memcg uh, usage is high, but the free memory on the system is very high as well. So the actually like. This memcg usage does not really correspond to its physical memory usage by this uh, job. And what we find out was uh, this was actually as before the, the caching, uh, like very old Linux kernel caching for the TCB, uh, so which is like two decade old. So kernel, uh, as I said, like there is one counter uh, usage counter for the TCB memory, and Kernel implements uh, like per socket uh, pre-charge cache. So each struct soak, each socket has its own cache in front of uh, this uh, single count global counter. Whenever uh, this socket needs memory, if it has uh, enough memory uh, in its local cache, good. Otherwise, it will go to the like uh, global counter. It increment this more than what it needs, and then uh, add the remaining into its local counter. On the free uh, uh, case, it will uh, uh, credit uh, the free into its local until to a, uh, to a limit. And this limit can be, uh, what we find out, can be one MB. So there were like, uh, situation there were corner like a uh, code paths where uh, yeah this uh, uh, this local per uh, socket cache can go up to one MB, and the application has like tens of thousands or even more hundreds of uh, thousands of sockets. We can uh, you can clearly see like uh, if majority of those sockets have this pre cache, uh, which is uh, just a cache, and does not really correspond to physical memory. Uh, we are just uh, like causing this job to see the memcg ohms without actually using the memory. So, so the fix was to uh, like move from per socket to the per CPU cache, and uh, Eric uh, fix uh, this. Uh, it's it's a recent uh, change. I think one kernel back. Uh, I'd say. So with the, with this uh, new change, the amount of uh, Cache. So previously it was the number of sockets into what the max, which is like one MB. With this, it was number of CPU, which is again it's it's a even at the highest it will be like order of hundred into one MB. So that's the the patch rates if you want to know more. However, like once this thing went in, we started getting reports of the like performance regression. MemCG charge previously, like every socket was having its own cache, uh, which was working fine. Now with this, with per CPU, MemCG charging becomes the the bottleneck, uh, and uh, the the I think kernel uh, LKP uh, performance. I think they sent out uh, the email uh, for performance regressions. So they reported that oh, with this we are seeing uh, with these uh, pass series. Uh, we are seeing 60, 70% regression. 
So to fix that, we uh, we just uh, like I just posted I think uh, a couple of weeks back. The like now we have to like I think MCG charging was getting free lunch. Now we have to actually improve and uh, like make the charging uh, uh, more performance critical. So there was uh, the initial set of patches are posted, and uh, I do plan to have more fixes follow up uh, on there. Basically, it was uh, you see there was. Two three issues uh, again false uh, cache uh, sharing between different uh, uh, members of the uh, struct MCG or page counter. If you have seen uh, morning's talk uh, from Arnaldo, uh, he he also mentioned uh, like uh, the struct uh, page counter struct. So exactly that, but now it's the next level. It was the usage and there is another the limit. They were sharing the same cache line. And uh, the the MemCG uh, like per CPU, it basically precharges uh, 32 uh, like pages. So we increase that to 64. So uh, optimization there. We'll see how that goes. The second uh, issue what we saw was we started for, for some specific workloads. We started seeing uh, hard lookups and uh, like crashing the machines. So on at the high level, uh, or like when we uh, go and debug it, so the application was very network intensive, and it was creating a lot of threads and putting all of them in equal weight. So uh, since it's uh, network intensive, uh, it sometimes does go and hit the limit and get um killed. So what we saw was whenever this job gets um killed. It uh, like caused the hard lockup, and uh, we had hard lockup on panic, like panic on hard lockup, so it crashed the machine. So, what we see, uh, like after analysis and crash time analysis, so the so all these threads, like thousands of threads, in the epoll weight are linked in a singly linked list, in linked in the linked list uh, related to the epoll, and whenever this uh, packet comes, it go and wake up one of those threads. And what it does is basically, okay, uh, the logic is there. Uh, I So this, the thread, the front of the uh, link list, this is the thread, I woke it up and remove it from the list. However, when the job gets sick killed, room killed, all of its threads basically gets their state changed. So all these wakers from the sort of you had to go through the like it, each thread, the whole link list to see which threads it can wake up. So that caused the uh, the hard lookup, and, and the fix was also uh, like debugging was harder. Fix was simple is to always remove them from the the link list. So. Right. Now let me uh, go over the the work in progress. Uh, uh, so we talked about like, we removed the system level TCPMM, we are start charging a job, but we still have a situation where the system level TCP pressure. So again, that disconnect between the like, system pressure and the TCP pressure. Now, one idea is how about, so this static TCPMM is the issue. How about we do it dynamically change? So based on the mem tree from the proc mem info. So for example, if you have good, like enough memory, keep it unlimited. But if you falls below some threshold or like 500 MB or one GB, depending on the system size and the network speed size, uh, uh, you like set it to low to cause all those TCP pressure uh, mechanisms to get triggered. So we are currently experiment, uh, experimenting with this, but, but it has two issues. The first is, is mem free uh, the right metric? Because if you have a lot of uh, cold reclaimable memory, page cache, uh, mem free is not really like uh, a good mechanism. Like you can easily reclaim all those instead of throttling the, the applications. The second is uh, this throttling. We are running multiple jobs or different priorities. If we enable, like use the TCP mem, it will start causing uh, the same, like it will any uh, socket, uh, which will uh, hit at that time, 
it will get throttled. So high priority jobs can get throttled. So the possible solution we are, we are kind of thinking of is, so memfree seems fine if you are uh, like doing uh, like proactive reclaim as well, or your threshold is somehow within, uh, so k swap d is like the kernel background reclaimer. The, the issue with the k swap d is like it's just one thread uh, on a big system. It might not be, like it has small uh, uh, watermarks, uh, those buffers uh, like from the, the min to the atomic reserves. So it might not be sufficient. So most probably user space uh, is preferable where we can uh, do multiple uh, threads. And the second is uh, it's like we definitely need uh, multiple thresholds of the TCP throttling. So like for example, uh, for free memory falls below some threshold only uh, Total low priority jobs. If it like at the end edge, you can then throttle more uh, jobs. And like uh, I think we haven't like uh, brainstormed much on the implementation, but it, I think it can be done. BPF. Uh, the uh, one challenge might be is how to do it in a performance critical way because uh, these a uh, couple of these code paths are uh, like very hot. So. That's the system. The, the second uh, here is the, the, the MEMCG uh, level. What about the job? Uh, uh, how do you define the MEMCG level uh, TCP pressure? So currently uh, there is a system VM pressure, which is being used uh, to define the MEMCG TC pressure for both V1 and V2. However, it, it's, uh, it's, it kind of assume like what it does is like when the, uh, there's a claim happening uh, in your uh, in your workload, uh, it sees okay the number of scanned pages, uh, reclaimed pages divided by scanned pages. So the memory reclaimer go and scan uh, all the reclaimable memory. So it assumes oh you have reclaimable memory, you reclaimable user memory. However. What about these network intensive uh, like workloads whose majority of memory is like network memory or, or, or the kind of memory or file uh, system spe uh, uh, specific workloads or workloads who just unlock uh, their memory, right? They don't have to clean memory. So it kind of fails uh, there. So now, now here one option is what about the PSI? The, the issue with the PSI is it's a, like it's oblivious to the source of the memory pressure. Uh, we want to like link with the MCG memory pressure, not with uh, any unrelated like system level uh, event. Or, and also it's kind of hierarchical. If you have a job, like some subgroup, which is in, uh, in suffering, you don't want to suffer its siblings. Okay, uh, but MemCV2 provides a throttling mechanism or throttling limit, memory dot high, it is a throttling. However, uh, the issue with this, it throttles the, the CPU of the threads. If the usage goes above there, it, it does not uh, 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 kill the job, it throttles the CPU, which can actually uh, make the TCP pressure bad because fr from the TCP perspective, it wants the CPU to consume uh, all the, the, the memory. So TC, like memory dot high is good, like it, it doesn't uh, trigger the reclaim and whatnot, but the, the CPU throttling mechanism might not be good. So the possible solution here, again, we are kind of brainstorming is something similar to memory high, because, uh, but without the CPU throttling. We'll see uh, how that goes. Let me, I think I have, this is the last slide. And uh, if you have questions later on, but let me conclude. So, so for, the, for the multi-tenant uh, servers, static TCP mem is harmful. And just to repeat, like if you run work, like uh, this multi-tenant uh, systems in your infra, or you're planning to migrate from V1 to V2, you will be facing all these challenges what we mentioned here. And uh, the main takeaways from our experience in deploying the TCP MCG. So the first, changing something fundamental will exp uh, like uh, break old assumptions and will expose you to new bugs. There definitely will be new bugs. Second, uh, the, the capability to have more fine-grained opt-in, opt-out jobs 
gives you the power to be more aggressive in deploying. Not a single user can deploy, like can delay all uh, your deployment. And the third, uh, we I think we didn't uh, like focus or go into too much detail here, but uh, investing in like the technologies like the uh, dynamic right sizing, load balancing actually helps a lot. Uh, so you don't have to worry about how much memory, like you as well as the, the owners, how much memory they need more because the this whole these mechanism will take care of them until like of course they have uh, some uh, like high level limits but you will know exactly like when those hit and what you need to do exactly okay oh uh, that's it and if there are any questions you can any consideration for treating pressure on allocating these uh, packets for TCP as like, um, shoot, as like a full queue? And so doing like red or ECN to back pressure the sender? Any allocation on TCP? Like, so you can't allocate. So you're ooming your C group, right? But like instead, you, so you're observing that you have pressure. So you want to like it's yeah, yeah. the same as a queue being full on a network device, is how it feels to me. It's uh, like a solution to that is to do like random early drop or explicit congestion notification. So the senders send you less. Uh, you're asking for just one within one job or at the system level? I guess if, if you do it randomly, then stochastically it'll be like by flow. But yeah, inside your job, I think is the answer. In, inside the job, uh, yes. So we, we do want, uh, so again, uh, since TC memory is any other memory, preferably uh, what the mechanism what we want is, uh, yes, we can this uh, pushback and the mechanisms, but before that, there might be already easily reclaimable memory, which should go away. And at the end, uh, so, so as you said, like OOM is uh, like, th there are like, we have many job owners who prefer getting OOM killed than to be get slow down. So there are jobs like that. So, and there are uh, other jobs owners who want uh, like no OOMs getting throttled or pushed back and slow down. So we do want a flexibility there, but yeah. Thank you. Maybe I can comment on your idea. I think it's a good idea, but um, if you drop incoming packets, uh, you, you augment the chance of having more packets in out of order queues. And so you add fuel to the fire. So you need to be very careful about what packet you drop. Uh, I have a question. It's related to the previous uh, Question: When you, in your slides you mentioned that the me mechanism like memory high uh, makes it worse, but does it apply universally both for the receive and transmit path? Is it, wouldn't it, it actually work for the transmit path if you slow down the senders? Sorry, I, I didn't get you. Can you repeat that question? Yeah. So. Uh, you said that the me mechanism like memory high is not effective, and it makes the situa situation even worse because you want to consume the data there. Uh, but does it apply both for the transmit and receive path, or would it actually help with the transmit path? So, so the issue is with the with the transmit TX uh, path. On the receive path, uh, this uh, memory refi actually uh, triggers uh, the 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 reclaim uh, like. The, the CPU th throttling uh, f f on the on the software IQ for the uh, memory dot high is kind of broken. It doesn't work. So on the receive side, that's fine. Uh, and we we do trigger the asynchronous reclaim uh, on the on whenever we are software IQ, we go over the memory dot high. So which kind of like helps as well. Uh, but uh, we don't really like do any enforcement. So the actual memory dot high enforcement happens on the process context. Uh, yeah, so it's not, not like, or, I mean, uh, when, when there's task sending the data, uh, 
it can allocate the memory, but then the throttling applies when it's uh, returning to user space. And it, so it could work that if it's the same process that is sending the data, so it will be the, this exactly this exact process that is then throttled. So this could work for the transmitters, no? You're asking the, the, the throttling mechanisms? Yeah, the throttling mechanism would slow down the transmitter. If you take CPU away from the yeah. transmitter, he's not gonna fill the bucket. Yes, uh, so you're saying uh, since uh, memory.high only throttles the, the senders, uh, it might be like the other, uh, it's throttling is fine in that scenario, if I understand you correctly. Yes. I have to think more, but I, I think uh, this is similar to what the, the normal, uh, like at the center side, we can, uh, thread can get uh, throttled. So it's similar. So on the, it might be more for like, I think uh, just the how uh, the memory high is implemented because on the receive side, it's not really enforcing or doing the throttling. So it might work, work out of the box. Yeah, I think the receive side, I think this works there. I okay, oh, thanks. Uh, yeah, I have to think more, but I think, yes, you are correct. Okay, thank you. Question there. Uh, <laughs> Almost made it. Yes. Uh, uh, to your point uh, uh, about PSI, so with, with PSI, you mentioned you, you can't tell whether the process in the C group is suffering because of the C group limit or because there's a global memory shortage. Um, but it, I didn't quite follow why that's a problem. So if you have um, outside pressure, machine is overloaded, um, pushing on the C group and it's causing it to drop its page cache, it's causing it to swap its anonymous pages, wouldn't you also want to react in terms of reducing its TCP memory at that point? So yeah, so the global reclaim is one, but, but it also can get triggered for the like compaction or, or huge page or depending on the different. So if we can, uh, I would say like, let's say PSI can tell us MCG or the global like situation, then yes, that can be used. But, but one thing uh, like, I don't have a clear answer uh, uh, like uh, is, but, will we like by reducing or by throttling the TCP uh, traffic of this job will help reduce the PSI. So currently uh, again, uh, let's say we able to differentiate or like we have a different PSI for the MCG and the global pressure, then uh, that thing getting reduced like throttling this, then yes, uh, that can help as well. Uh, have to see exactly like how to define uh, like the intensity, how the PSI values corresponds to the intensive of how much we do the, how much aggressive we have to be. So th those we have to like figure out. Yeah, definitely. Any more questions? There is uh, one here the CPU throttling is caused by the sync. It is sync reclaim, but it, it uh, there is also schedule out two sec for two, like at most two seconds as well uh, in the memory dot high. Okay, uh, any more questions? Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks. <laughs>